you. Uh, people, cars, objects, anything. I'm talking about just the abstract uh, shapes and the design of your of your picture plane. If I have a frame now that's completely dark, and I put something that's white, your eye is going to go right here. Likewise, if I were to make that red, your eye would go right there. Right. So. Uh, you can use contrast, dark and light, that kind of stuff to create visual interest in your composition. You could have a person's head, right? And then over the shoulder shot, or, uh, you know, you could have the person's nose is pointing at your at your focal point here, right? This is the shoulders. Uh, you can also use dark and light. So, let me so just with that, you've got, you know, the, the objects pointing and you also have um, a little bit of dark and light contrast. So let me do one better too. You could even have this be the the focal point of the perspective lines. You can have this person's head. If I if I make this perspective grid, you can have that point at your object, right? All right. So let me go to another thing. Back to this. All right. Um, so we're talking about composition, screen direction. Now I don't know if you guys. Um, I'm sure. You know, as, as students of animation and, and filmmaking, screen direction is something you really have to be concerned with. And the 180 rule is um, it's an easy concept to understand, but it's in the practical application of it can be a little bit difficult. So going back to this, uh, and we'll get into that in a second, but going back to this uh, idea of, uh, of the thumbnails and communicating your ideas, you want to establish a composition, establish the screen direction, establish your camera angles, staging, and most important, is fulfilling the story point. So you organize your thoughts, you quickly change ideas, it's a quick shorthand pitch uh, to your director, and simple line drawings, like playing Pictionary. Right, and this goes with, uh, let me try and highlight this, this goes with uh, any storyboard drawing. Alright, practice, practice. What time, uh, with time you'll be faster than any computer. That's the truth. Drawing and knowing, uh, having your skills in check and being able to produce quick drawings that read is really way faster than doing any computer. By the time you turn it on, fire up Maya, get your models, get your set, uh, model your characters, read your characters, you'd be done already. You'd have the story already established. So that's one of the reasons why storyboarding is so important. Uh, thumbnailing toolkit. Simplicity. Right, that goes hand in hand with um, with uh, with some of the simple line drawings that I'm telling you about. Perspective, one point, two point, three point perspective. And the perspective grid. I establish one your horizon line. You know, uh, I don't want to patronize you guys with um, with a, uh, a perspective lecture here, but basically know that you're using uh, a couple elements. Uh, you know, with drawing to create your your perspective here. So you get your horizon line. Uh, and then I usually draw in my my grid lines here, and of course you know parallel lines converge to a vanishing point, which is here. Right? And this, there we are. So then, this establishes it could be the ground plane, it could be the sky plane, it could be anything. The good thing about doing digital boards nowadays is you can take this and you can rotate it, you know, you can move it in any direction that you want. So this is one good way to establish. Uh, your composition, and uh, now you notice too. I'm, we're doing this on the computer, and this is online. But I, we do work digitally now. There's 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 a there's a new trend and revolution in in storyboarding that uh, started really pretty recently. But uh, I recommend you guys, if you guys are interested in doing this kind of stuff. In fact, any production type work, you should know the computer. You should know digital media. I work on a Cintiq at work. Uh, I, I'm working on a Cintiq right now in front of you guys. And uh, it has really s sped up the production process, and it's essential that you guys know how uh, how it works and how to do it. Be comfortable with this kind of interface. I fought this for a long time. I used to be a, a you know staunch traditionalist. Pen pencil and paper for me, nothing else. I've changed my tune considerably because I found the benefit and the speed in doing digital boards. So enough on that. Uh, so once you have the perspective lines. You can establish the characters, right? You can use that as a guide. And basically, you know, you can plant somebody in there. He's being cut across the, the horizon line here. And then once you have that, you know, you can do something that I call hanging perspective. Is that any person of similar size or any object of similar size in your in your picture will always be cut off at the same point in your on your horizon line. So for example, this guy's cut off right below the eyes. 
Same with this guy back here. And I could do this all going all the way back into my picture plane. In fact, I could have somebody who's like huge in the foreground. Um, let me move some of this out of the way. I could have somebody huge in the foreground, and it's still, it's relatively in perspective. Because I'm using this kind of idea of 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 a hanging perspective, cutting them off at the horizon line. So perspective grid is huge. Now you don't always have to put in the horizon line. Uh, a lot of times it's just kind of inferred perspective. Look, this line's even wonky. I don't even care. I'm going after speed, right? So I can use the the lines of the perspective grid to establish the line of the shoulders. For example, here's the line of the shoulders, and so you can you can create a shot here, right? All using the perspective grid. It's very very uh, useful tool when doing this stuff. The other thing too is um, sometimes that I like to do is I'll do the perspective grid on a different layer. So you'll notice up here I've created a new layer. Like I said, don't worry about the uh, nitty gritty of how this program works. Just know that I'm using layers to create um, create the image. So I'm establishing another perspective grid, you'll notice that it's not horizontal with the picture plane. It's not uh, perfectly lined up with the edges of the picture here. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll put my character on a different layer. So, so now, since I have them on a different layer, I can move them around, that kind of thing. There's one perspective group. It's showing it's kind of an upshot looking up at this guy. And now, I haven't changed the image, right? In fact, let me fill this in so you can kind of see. So you see that? All I did was change the perspective grid. And you get two different shots out of that, right? It's such a useful tool. Here, if you look at this, you kind of infer that it's an upshot looking up at this guy. If I go to the next image, now it's a down shot looking up at this guy. I didn't change the image of the person in there at all. All I did was change the perspective grid. So this is a useful tool when establishing your uh, storyboard panels, OK? So that's, that's one of the things about perspective. Uh, very, very important. And uh, another trick here, too. Let me move on. The vanishing points, they can be way off here. Here's the horizon line. You can do this kind of thing. It doesn't have to be on on screen. And then from there, you can establish you know, your character's position. Right? You get an upshot looking at this guy. Right? Uh, one of the things also is that it, this establishes depth, right? These lines converging to a single point here is depth. That uh, depth. That's one of the things that you always have to uh, that you're striving for uh, in your storyboards. One of the things here is I talk a lot about drawing shorthand. Okay, uh, Starman shapes, uh, custom shapes to learn, house, car, tree, etc., and the use of arrows. Right? Now, what I mean by this in the drawing shorthand, let me go back to my drawing board here is that you have to simplify. You have to learn how to simplify your characters and stuff. So sometimes you might get, um, like for example, you, we have Yoda. I'll draw you guys Yoda for a second, right? And you know, Yoda can be this like super complicated character. He's got like these big eyes and nose and that kind of thing. But you know what? I learned to simplify this guy and he's got these like wrinkles. He even has like hair and stuff like that. There it is. That's my Yoda, right? You know, put a couple of wrinkles there, and uh, and that's all I need, right? You know, I can even simplify that even more. I can just do the outline shape of of Yoda, right? His ear, and then you know his eyeball, mm. right? So you want to simplify these kinds of uh, things, and and part of it is the drawing shortcuts. So one thing I talk about, especially when you're doing your thumbnails, um, is uh, Starman shape. You can literally just do a star man, right? Look how simple that is. Put two dots, and you got you got a person, right? And that's enough information. So basically, and you add a perspective grid to that, you've already established that you kind of have you know a medium medium wide shot here of this person. So that's important. So let me clear that and uh, talk a little bit more about it. So really, uh, one of the things that I do as a shorthand, I do this kind of, you know, kind of egg shape for the head, and I, I, I tack on this cheek, and I put two eyeballs, and a smile, and that's basically it. You know, off this kind of base character, 
you know, if I add 